This is 104.2 Nile FM. I'm Rob Stevens. Thank you very much for joining me on this, uh, just double-checking the day, Tuesday. I do know it's getting closer to the weekend, and that's, that's really what it's all about. Now, I have been talking about this for a little while, and in the studio now, I have a special guest with me, and that would be Mike Bailey from the British Council. Hi, Mike. Hi, Rob. How Hi. are you? Good, thanks. Yeah, We've good. been talking about so much cool stuff off air. Now, I thought this was your first trip to Egypt, so I was like, ah, just like everyone does with me when, when I first got here. So what do you think? Only to find out, you've been here before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I um, first arrived in Egypt, my first job, actually, 30 years ago. Wow. So what's, what's the difference between 30 years ago and now? And Not much. Well, some things haven't changed at all, actually. I think, you know, kind of... Um I'm finding, it, again, I'd forgotten how warm and kind of welcoming Egypt is, and that, that hasn't changed at all. Warm now? You, you've you got to wait a couple of months, and it's, it's going to be really warm. No, I meant warm people. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the hospitality yeah, is so... Hospitality is people are so nice and friendly. Um, but, I mean, I, I really want to know about the the country. I mean, obviously, there was less cars back then. Yeah, my, uh, fewer cars, for sure. Um, lots of black and white taxis back in those days. Yeah. Um, fewer supermarkets, no big shopping malls. More places to park. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah, that, yeah. that would have been amazing. Oh, man. I, I was always saying earlier, I love looking at photos of um, places where, that I know and then seeing how they are today and sort of comparing them. And when you do that with Egypt, especially downtown, there's not a lot of things that have changed. And that's what I love about it is they, they've kept their historical identity as well. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot is still very familiar to me. So that's great. It's made me feel very sort of at home yeah. very quickly. So um, what area are you living in at the moment? Well, I'm very lucky, actually. I'm living in Zamalek. I, back 30 years ago, I dreamt of living in Zamalek. So it's oh, really? a dream come true. Oh, there you go. It took 30 years it took to 30 achieve. Years, yeah. But he got there. <laughs> so uh, now you were just telling us about the fact that you were here 30 years ago mm -hmm. working for the British Council. That was your first like foreign assignment? Is, is that what they it? Call was it was my first job, yeah, okay. after leaving the university. Oh, that was, yeah. that, that's a cool job to have. And that's then since there, you've been all over the world, but still working with the British Council. Yep. So the question I've got to ask you is how does the British Council uh, differ country to country compared to Egypt and what was it like to come back? Great question. Um, I think um, working for the British Council has been absolutely uh, amazing. Um, I think there's a lot that a um, lot of similarities actually between the British Council you know operations around the world. We do a lot of work in uh, teaching and exams and cultural relations. Um, so I found a lot of things which are very similar. I think what makes Egypt stand out is it's one of the biggest um, I'm now working in the exams department one of the biggest exams operations we have um, globally and the biggest one we have in our region here MENA um, and what stands out for me actually coming back to Egypt after all this time is the kind of great people I'm working with and again that's made me feel really welcome and really proud to be working for such a great team um, I've got great colleagues in Cairo and Alexandria um, so it's, it's wonderful Hey, nice. I, I I know that the British Council itself has been celebrating 80 years recently here in Egypt. Um, so I won't ask if you do, do you have the, still the same people that you were working with back in 30 years ago that are still here now? Or have they then also in turn moved on to other countries? Um, well, actually, I didn't start working for the British Council in Egypt 30 okay. years ago. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Oh, I know. I was <laughs> but, and there are, there are some people who are still working for the British Council who were here 30 years ago. Some great wow. colleagues who've been here all that time. Um, but a lot of change as well. Um, the office, you know, has has new members of staff. We we rotate um, all the time to kind of bring new energy, new ideas into operations. But there is under that, you know, core of of really professional kind of people who've been around for a very long time, uh, working with you know uh, ministries here and 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 Egyptians to to, to get things going. This sounds awesome. Um, I, I really wish we had more than an hour. I want to get to the serious stuff now, if that's all right. Fine. And I've got some text messages, which we'll go through in, uh, in a few minutes' time. Now, the question I do want to ask genuinely for myself is, I've heard of IELTS, but I don't honestly know what it is exactly. So what is it, and why do you need to take the IELTS? IELTS is an English language proficiency test. Um, it's the premium um, test globally currently. Um, recognised by over 9,000 organisations globally, um, both in the UK and uh, elsewhere in the world, including the US, Canada um, and, and Europe, but internationally. Um, it's a proficiency test which looks at an individual's English language ability um, and very closely assesses that individual's um, English language proficiency 
um, across the board. So in both listening, reading, writing and speaking. Um, and then gives you an overall band score, um, which then you can use to basically open doors to opportunities um, for further study, opportunities if you want to be moving country and there are visa requirements that require an English language um, assessment. Wow. Um, and also for people in work. Um, so it, 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 it's, a, it's a great test. Um, it's got lots of functions and a lot of uses, but it also it's, um, it, would, it, it would help your, not just your academic uh, life, but also if you wanted to then, let's say, work in the UK, you know, if you have the IELTS, that's going to give you a, obviously a step up. Um, okay, so that's what it is and why people should take it. But it, you mentioned something about some sort of structure where you've got reading, writing and, and listening as well. What is it? What, what is the test structure itself? Okay, so as I say, you've got you've got the four parts. You've got the listening section, um, and again, IELTS is something that is is based in 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 real um, real use of English in real life situations. So all throughout the test, be it the listening, the reading, the writing, or speaking, all the tasks you're asked to complete um, relate to real world tasks. Um, so, for example, there are there are four sections in the listening and you might be listening to um, somebody asking for tourist information, okay. which, again, is something that somebody would have to do if they're traveling to uh, an English speaking country. They're real based tasks rather um, than what they teach you at school. It's like, my name is this. Uh, do you have any pets? Uh, I can remember. Yeah. Why, why do I need to know that? Someone was ask, uh, teaching us that in French. I think it was. Quel âge el house tira? Or maybe that was German. I wasn't very good at foreign languages, <laughs> as you can probably tell. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's um, it's not just the the textbook stuff. It's a real life situation or uh, conversation and listening and reading and writing and that sort of thing as well. Yeah, and the speaking test is, again re replicates, asks you to talk through things that you would be doing in a, a natural situation. Um, in a minute, maybe we'll talk. There are there are two different types of IELTS tests. There's the academic IELTS and the the general IELTS. Um, the academic IELTS obviously focuses and is used for people wanting to study in higher education institutes, um, go on to English language, English language content courses. Um, and that will, though the tasks there in the, in the writing and the reading specifically, look at academic situations. So asking you in the writing, for example, to be looking at graphs and describing those graphs. So again, it's, it's helping people um, prepare for those real life situations they'll be encountering. Excellent. How exactly can you prepare for for this examination? And what are the services that the British Council can pro uh, provide for candidates to prepare for it? Very briefly, obviously, there's this kind of the general preparation for English and what you can do yourself um, that you can control in terms of bringing up your level of English. And there's all sorts of things that I'm sure the listeners will know about in terms of, you know, exposing themselves to as much English as they possibly can, be it through films, be it through chatting with people, using English with their friends, or be it listening to Nile FM. Good call. See, I was going to say that. I was going to say thank, thank you very much. I was also saying to you earlier how I've suddenly become very... See, I have now become very conscious of the fact that I need to speak English correctly. And not that there's sort of stuff that I normally do on my show, right? I say all the wrong things. Like, I use the word actual way too many times. But then again, actually, Rob, I mean, you shouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, your English is pretty good. Okay, but you. again, IELTS, people shouldn't be fearful that IELTS, you know, is looking at, um, you know, modern English and, and modern English usage. Okay. Um, so, you know, it, it does reflect, it does test, um, you know, as I say, a modern English. Um, also... Um, it, it is a test that people shouldn't be frightened of because it's trying to find out what you can do with English rather than trying to trip you up with what you can't do with English. And the whole test is built around encouraging people to um, bring out as much English as they possibly can. And in the speaking test, that's very much part of it, that the examiner is trying to, to get you to, to use your English as best as you possibly can. But obviously, um, going back to your original question, sorry, um, in terms of preparation, you do need to prepare for IELTS because you need to be aware of the types of tasks, the types of English you're going to be asked to, be, to use. Um, as I said before, there are two types of tests. There's the academic and the general. Um, and the academic will 
will include in certainly in the writing and, and bits of the reading as well um, at tasks that you you won't naturally um, be using yourself in English um, so again we need to ask people to prepare and in terms of what the British Council you know provides for people and people can go onto our website at www.britishcouncil.org.eg to find out about, about all of this in more detail but we have face-to-face -face offers where we offer both free and paid for services in terms of information sessions um, preparation courses at our fantastic teaching centres um, in Agusa, Heliopolis and City Stars now um, but there's also um, free online um, material that people can access today if they want to through our website. Um, there are various British Council apps that have focused on IELTS learning as well. So there's a lot there. And as I say, I encourage people to go to our website to find out what's best for them. OK, um, we'll go through that website again in a second. Um, why take IELTS with the British Council? Because we're experts at at delivering and, and preparing people for the test. We've been, you know, working with IELTS for, well, since IELTS was born, um, which is over 25 years now. And we've done this across the globe, um, as I say, with very experienced teams. And it's very important that the, the, the atmosphere we create for the candidates is one in which they feel very comfortable. And so we spend a lot of time looking at our customer journey, making sure that the test is available when our customers want it, in the places they want to be tested, which are convenient, in places which are appropriate. So places that are um, of a, a quality experience that fits the test. Um, and all our staff, as I say, work with some amazing colleagues in our exams department. Um, they're focused on making that what is for most people, we have to admit, quite a stressful. <laughs> I remember tests at school. It's not a nice experience, but we do everything we can to make that experience a, a, a positive one. Excellent. Now, if you do want to know more information about anything that we've spoken about, uh, you can go to their website. It's www.britishcouncil.org.eg. Uh, or you can check out the, the picture of me and Mike on our Facebook page, and we're going to tag them in that as well. Now, uh, this is also being videoed, so you'll be able to watch this on the socials, um, either Facebook or Twitter or wherever it is that you are watching this because you're watching it already. You know about the video because you're watching it. But those of you listening to this right now, uh, that, that, that could have been a, a, a mind fizz. Uh, hi, Mike. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm confused. <laughs> yes, me too. Um, so lights, camera, and we're on. Uh, thank you very much. You're, you're from the British Council. If anyone's just joined us, we're talking today about the IELTS exam. You've told us about uh, you being here 30 years ago, coming back. There's just less parking spaces, mostly. Um, and about the IELTS exam itself. Now, we can't really go back through all of the information that you've given us because it, it, it was such valuable information. But there is a few little bits and pieces that we need to add. So uh, there is a free preparation book. If you're watching the video, you can see this yep, now. I'll hold that up now. That's there video. we go. That's that. There's the video. Up a little bit higher. Uh, thank there you very much. Go. And uh, if, if I can have it as well for yeah, the other camera. There you go. Two camera set up. Check us out. No expenses spared. Hi. Here is the book. This, this one here. Can you see this? Go and get it now from the British Council. Thank you very much. Cheers. <clears throat> Good. Um, so registration. It's easy and simple as well. You can do it in person. Where can you do that? Yeah, you can do it at any of our five offices um, in Egypt. So we've got offices in Alexandria. We've got um, offices in, uh, we've got our main office um, in Agusa. Um, we also have teaching centers in Heliopolis, um, City Stars and Nile University. And you can also um, register and pay online. Wow. Okay, that's cool. So um, what's the web address again, please? I'm going to let you say it this time. Hmm. www.britishcouncil.org.eg Yay. So I wasn't putting you on the spot then. No, thank so, you. Right, now I'll say this. <laughs> um, okay, so we have got one message that's come through there. I, I think it's quite a cool one. So, going to try and get my way through this. It says from Rashid, why most of the people complaining about the writing section and considering it the most difficult part? I myself saw people getting above seven band uh, score easily in listening, reading and speaking, but not in writing. So what are the best methods generally to improve writing in English? Now, that's a very good question and a question we get very often, actually. And it's um, you're not alone. Um, it is true that... Um, 
often uh, people find the writing section the most difficult. I think if you think about it, um, most um, people these days, um, they're doing... They, they're exposed to quite a lot of English, through, you know, and they listen to a lot of English. So their listening skills will be, um, you know, quite, quite good generally, those receptive skills. Um, and likewise, reading. People do have access and in schools, you know, traditional school teaching, a lot of reading happens. And so that skill, you know, tends to be strong as well. I think we find that, that writing is a, a particularly um, difficult one. And I think it's all about preparing yourself properly. And and actually, it's really good that the um, the writer. Sorry, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Rashid. Rashid. Sorry, Rashid. Um, Rashid. Um, yeah, it's it's not unusual, Rashid, to 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 have that. And it's very good that you've identified that that's your weaker area, perhaps, and that allows you now to have a look at those materials we were talking about earlier and some of those apps. Um, and looking at how you can improve, look at those um, preparation materials and start practicing. Um, and start maybe getting some feedback from from people, whether they're teachers. Um, as I say, we do have some workshops where these things will be talked through and will help you prepare. But it's good you've actually identified that as something you should be working on. So you can practice and, and get stronger within that subject or that, uh, that table. Yeah, and often, well, yeah, that often if you, sorry to interrupt, if you don't prepare for the particular tasks that come up in the writing sections, of the um, IELTS test, then, you know, just the shock of, of being asked to do something new um, is maybe going to affect your performance. So it's all about preparation, 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 and, and getting prepared, knowing those the types of tasks that you might have to complete. Mike, thank you so much for coming in. It's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed myself. I, I wish that we had more time. Um, now, if you do want to know any more information about uh, any of the things that we've been talking about, check us out on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash FM. There's going to be a picture of me and Mike there. And then you can click on the little link and it'll take you to their Facebook page where you can find their website. You can find out more information about IELTS itself, where their uh, offices are and where you can go and get yourself that free book. Mike, thank you for coming in. Thank you very much, Rob. Thanks for having me. Uh, Ahlem or Sahlen, as they say. <laughs> we, we were actually, oh, see, there you go. We were talking about that earlier. Did any of the Arabic come back? And you were like, yeah, actually it did. Uh, so let's continue with this. It's the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Desecration Smile. Of course, they played here at the weekend. I was there singing along and screaming as loud as I could. In fact, one person did tell me to shut up because I was ruining the song. How dare they? I won't do that now, though. <laughs> <laughs> 